Starting back from where we left off, we were performing an analysis of uh, RNA-seq gene expression data on a single-cell RNA-seq data set using Alt-Analyze. We just did a comparison analysis between a series of known covariates or known comparison groups, such as uh, blastocyst, um, eight-cell eight stage embryo, uh, uh, and pluripotent stem cells, among others. Now we're going to do an unbiased analysis where we have no idea what the groups are. Uh, there were a lot of single cells analyzed in the study that we're referencing here, the single cell RNA-seq profiling of human uh, pre-implantation embryos and embryonic stem cells. And to do the kind of analysis we want to do, the, single, the unbiased single cell analysis, we're going to go back to Alt-Analyze, start it up again. Again, we're going to say other ID and symbol because this is uh, normalized outside of Alt-Analyze. So this is with the external data, which is fine. Um, we're going to select our expression file that we had generated before, an expression input, save results to that same directory, continue. Again, this is non-log RPKM data. Um, and we can leave the other options uh, pretty much as, as they are, that's fine. Again, an adjusted p-value is better. We'll do our pathway visualization again. And then instead of hitting continue here where we have our group specified, we're going to select this option at the top that says predict groups from unknown sample types. You get this new window here with some additional new options. This is very similar to the hierarchical clustering expression viewer window that we saw. But there's some very important differences. At the top here you see this RPKM cutoff, a read counts cutoff, a fold change cutoff, a Pearson correlation cutoff, and a minimum number of samples differing cutoff. You have options for analyzing gene expression changes versus uh, alternative exons, which are actually intelligently not shown here because we don't have alternative exon sensitive data. We don't have junction or exon level expression values. Uh, you can restrict your analysis to protein coding genes. You can control the clustering algorithms that are used. Um, I actually like uh, a clustering algorithm called HOPAC in R. Uh, Alt-Analyze is actually able to remotely, automatically connect to R um, if you have it installed. On a Mac, in a Unix environment, this is seamless. On a PC, you have to specify the location of R um, in, in your uh, environmental settings, settings. There's also a number of additional options here. You can, you can actually select pathways that you want to restrict your analysis to, but at the same time, branch out and get correlated genes to those genes in those pathways. This is a, an additional kind of more focused but, but useful discovery option. Um, you can choose to eliminate cell cycle effects. Uh, this is going to remove genes associated with cell cycle and actually clusters of co-regulated genes that were, where there's really any genes associated with cell cycle. So these are the default options. One thing I need to change here um, is to change this where it says 50. We actually don't have read counts that are specified because we don't have a separate read count file, unlike this default alt analyze file. So we're just going to set this, actually set this to zero. Um, the, the fold change is, is a bit extreme. Um, so we can set this to, um, but we, you know, for now we'll keep it at 10. We'll keep it a stringent analysis. Uh, we usually keep this correlation threshold a little bit smaller, uh, but we'll, we'll keep this at three samples differing. And we'll just hit continue and we'll perform this analysis. Our single cell analysis just completed, and we're just going to select OK. The single cell analysis results are provided in the form of heat maps showing the major gene expression clusters. At the top here, we can actually select which one of these options we like the best and proceed with it for further differential expression analysis between the defined cluster groups in these files. Now, in the first cluster, which is the first cluster generated, all genes were initially considered, filtered down based on number of, or based on differential expression, where we were looking at three and three samples differentially expressed, at least tenfold. And you see at the top here, these are the major defined clusters. Now it's using the default clustering algorithms, and so we're not seeing the resolution or the division here that we'd like to see. However, the signals are showing the major observed gene expression changes in these groups. The second cluster, which is labeled cluster three, 
this is a, a feature that needs to be corrected in the software, but is actually taking the those major gene expression changes and it's actually trying to represent them the major signatures that are present in there. So it's effectively filtering down that file to find the major gene clusters. And so uh, this is a little simpler. Uh, it's forcing it to use HOPAC since, since uh, it's a smaller set of, of uh, genes to cluster and, and it shouldn't take as long. Uh, and these are actually forming some, some reasonably biologically informative uh, cluster divisions. It's not perfect. You see down here that some of the groups are still glummed together, um, but some of these are meaningful. All of the uh, blastocysts and embryonic stem cells are, are, are separated out from each other, and there's even a subgroup of human embryonic stem cells here. This middle cluster here is actually now derived from this other cluster, and so cluster 2, you'll notice, has all of these genes on the right. And the reason why is, is that this is a driver gene prediction analysis. That last cluster we saw, uh, genes are identical from those, each of those clusters. Uh, uh, genes in those clusters are identified, particularly transcription factors that are observed to be central to those clusters and are actually selected to go back and are correlated to all genes within the data set. These now derive, uh, theoretically at least, uh, more homogeneous gene expression signatures and identify interesting transcription factors that actually might be driving these distinct groups. And you actually see the clusters at the top are a little bit more divisive, which is what we want, um, and potentially more biologically meaningful. And ideally in some situations are dividing uh, uh, predicted biological groups up into subgroups that are more meaningful. And so if we wanted this cluster, this cluster 2, for example, we would select it, so you say you selected and continue, um, and we'd run the standard differential workflow analysis we just ran uh, when, we, when we knew which groups to select for. We can also say we don't like this, we're going to recluster, we're going to change these options now, we're going to increase or decrease these correlations, we're going to increase the filter number of samples, we're going to remove cell cycle effects. Um, so these are all different options we can do. Instead, I'm actually going to go back, rerun this analysis for a restricted set of samples. We're just going to look at the blastocyst and embryonic stem cell samples, which PCA showed us at least, were very similar to each other. So we want to amplify those effects. Skipping ahead a little bit, I've taken just the pluripotent stem cell samples along with the blastocyst samples and have just performed the same single cell workflow on them. If we look at these results, we actually see a little bit of granularity, but we see major, predominantly a distinction between the late blastocysts on the left here and the human embryonic stem cells on the right. Again, with some of the human embryonic stem cells showing some differences, but these, these effects are not huge. The late blastocyst, however, is showing some differences. And is showing, some of these are showing a human embryonic stem cell-like signature, whereas some of these are showing an absence of the major blastocyst signature we saw before. If we look at our drilled down driver-based results, we see, again, this is recapitulated. Um, however, we see some nice driver genes that could be used to distinguish these, these more clearly defined subgroups now, which are largely present in the blastocysts, but, but less so in the more hom homogeneous human embryonic stem cells. Like before, we could iterate this process. We could go back and change the settings. We could look only at certain pathways. Um, we could change our correlation coefficients, and, and those are all reasonable approaches, and, and I recommend that. Uh, an alternative approach, or at least a, a parallel approach, is to use the hierarchical clustering um, a tool that I showed you earlier. Um, you can actually do quite a bit of single-cell exploratory analysis with that tool. And with that, that's what we're going to hit on in our next tutorial. Um, uh, but for this tutorial, um, this is it. And uh, if you have questions, uh, please feel free to contact me. Thank you for listening. Take care.